Hey, good evening. This is Dave Gesser with the Southwest Area Incident Management Team 3. Uh, just wanted to let you know, get an update out for folks today on the fire activity we had. Um, Corey will come up here in a little bit, our ops chief, and give you an update of around the fire. But basically wanted to let you know, you know they were trying to hold the Kilpecker line. The fire activity increased enough that we had to pull firefighters out of there for their safety. The fire did make about a 1,500 acre run. We were able to get large air tankers uh, brought in to help us. And with that, you know, we've talked quite a bit about we couldn't use tankers in this heavy fuels. But as this fire moved to the west, sorry, east, we were able to bring in those tankers because we were getting into more favorable country there. Um, so we were able to get those tankers in there and be able to be a little more effective with those air tankers. And with that, I'll turn it over to Corey. Uh, good evening, Corey Carlson, Planning Operations Trainee for Southwest Team 3. So like Dave said, about 13.30 this afternoon, um, our problem child on the northeast part of the thumb got active, um, kind of jumped the Kilpecker line, and in about 45 minutes made about a mile run to the north side of South, South Bald Mountain. So uh, at that point, we had to pull all resources back to their safety zones, and um, we, we moved them around up onto the Manhattan Road and some of this dozer line that we've been putting in for the last week or so. Uh, also, we put some folks up on the, on the Dead Man Road. And basically, we just got in position to implement any structure protection for the communities of Red Feather and Crystal Lakes should we need to do that. Uh, we did put Red Crystal Lakes and Red Feathers on mandatory evacuations as well as voluntary evacuations for Glacier View. And this is just it's given our uh, opportunity for our fire folks to get engaged in here, get prepared, should this thing want to continue to, to move towards the communities. And it, it did continue to move all afternoon. Like Dave said, about 1,500 acres. It's, it's moved into section 11 here on the map. Um, as of about 45 minutes ago, the fire has laid down. Um, as the sun's starting to go down, as the RHs are starting to go up, and as well as the winds decrease, it's, uh, fire, has activity, fire activity has moderated quite a bit. Um, and this run was primarily driven by the, the stronger southwest winds and then some uh, alignment with slope. Um, so that, that's kind of what, what caused this today. Uh, we, did, uh, we did disengage some resources from Division Alpha. We bed them down er, this afternoon so that they can get up this evening in case there's any structure protection that needs to happen along the Dead Man and Manhattan Road. We are uh, prepared to do some burnouts potentially around the subdivision if the fire activity dictates that, but we're hoping, we're hoping that's not going to have to be the case. Um, one, one thing to, to note, we've, we've been really struggling with this portion of the thumb for, for a while now. This, this fire, now that it's out in here, as you can see, it's gotten into a little bit more favorable country, so that could be an advantage. We have some road systems here. We have this dozer line. We have the 517 road here. Um, just gives us a few more options to, to potentially put heavy equipment in crews. Um, that's a little bit easier accessibility than, than where, it at, where it's been at for a while. Uh, so pretty much that's, that's the update. Like Dave said, they, we flew four or five large air tankers we continued to fly the three single engine air tankers, and we continued to use uh, heavy helicopters. Um, elsewhere around the fire, um, I won't spend a whole lot of time, but fairly, fairly minimal activity. Just continued to monitor and patrol. Um, you know, all the action was really up here today. Um, so with that, uh, end of report. Thanks.